السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وي ستار وي ستوب لاست تايم وير وي وير توكينج اباوت ذا سبليتس ذا ثري سبليتس رايت وات وير ذا ثري سبليتس وي هاد ذا اوريجينال تريننج سيت وي سبليتد فيرست انتو تريننج سيت اند تيست سيت اند وي اولسو سبليت ذا تريننج سيت انتو تريننج سيت اند ديف سيت واي ديد وي دو ذات Okay, so we, we have this diff set so that we can tune, we can get the best values for the hyperparameters, okay? And uh, the training set is, is used to get the values for the, for the parameters of the model, okay? So we have parameters, we have hyperparameters. We learn the parameters uh, from the training set. We learn the hyperparameters from the diff set. Type, why do we have a test set that is separate from the other two? to evaluate the model, okay? To evaluate the model. So eventually we have three splits, the training set to learn the parameters, the development set, sometimes also it's called validation set, you would hear this uh, in other contexts, uh, or held out data. We use it to learn or tune the hyperparameters, and finally the test set to evaluate how good the model is on uh, something that is completely unseen. And I think uh, we saw also this example, on decision trees when we want to tune the only hyperparameter of the decision trees, which is the depth, okay? So we trained uh, trees with multiple, with different depths. For every depth, we get, we, we compute the accuracy on the depth set, okay? So we compute the accuracy for a tree at depth zero, then we built another tree at depth one, compute the accuracy for it, and depth two, depth three, and depth four, of course, we can continue with that if we want, uh, but here we stop at four, and then we pick the best depth. How, how do we pick the best depth? Yeah, the one that gave us the best accuracy. Okay, so in this case was this one. So that was the best accuracy among all of these. So that means that the best value for the, uh, the hyperparameter, which is the depth, is three. Right, because that's the one that is corresponding to this accuracy, okay? And then we compute the accuracy for that on the test set. That's what we did last time, okay? Type. Now, let me ask you a question. This accuracy is of this model, right? Right? Right or not? And this accuracy is also for the same model or for different model? Same model. How come that we can have two accuracies for the same model? Why not? How? How? Why? Yani, are you saying that these two accuracies are different or the same? They can be different, right? Yeah. They can be different. The set is unknown to us. Okay, and the div set? No, actually we said three sets, right? Yeah. And these three sets are completely disjoint. So nothing in the div set is in the training set. And nothing in the test set in the div set and the training set and so on. So all of them, all, of the, all the three, uh, have disjoint uh, examples. So you said that these can be different, and I agree with you. And you also said that these accuracies are of the same model, which is the tree that is trained at depth three, and I also agree with you. But still I'm asking you, why do we have two different values? Or why could we have two different values for the same model? Yes, because the div set and the test set are different, okay? So although both are unseen to the model here, right? We didn't use the div set in training, right? Right? So both the, the div set and the test set are unseen examples to this model. But because they are different, we might get different accuracies. Okay? The hope is that the difference will be small. 
So we hope that this difference is, will be small. So that we can assume that this, this accuracy will be really uh, um, the, 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 accurate, the accurate performance of the system. Okay? Is that clear? It's clear that we can compute, we can get the two different accuracies because the test set is, if I give you two different exams, will you have the same grade? Maybe, but generally, no, it could be different grades, right? That's the same thing here. Both exams were unseen to you, um, and you got different grades, right? So uh, that's, that's the same thing here. Type, another question. We mentioned last time that the test set, we, you, we should never, uh, that's the, the cardinal rule, we should never ever touch the test set, right? Type. Can we say the same thing about the div set? Why not? Can we, we, we touch the div set? Yes. How? To tune, to tune the hyperparameters, right? Type. We agree on that, right? Yes. Type. In training one tree, yani let's, take, let's take this tree. Did we have access to the div set? In training? In training. No. no. Okay, so that's the same rule, by the way. Okay, the same rule. When we train, we don't have access to anything that we will test the performance on. It has to be completely unseen. Okay, type. But still confusing because you said that we also, we also touched the div set, right? So how come we didn't touch it and we touch it? Actually, it's not confusing. In building one, in training one tree, we didn't uh, see the, the development set, right? But we just compute the accuracy for that tree on that div set. But when we change the, the we, when we build a new tree, we again test on that div set. Okay? So we, we are not using it in training. That's the main point. Touching here means we, we don't use it for training. Okay? Across different models, because we want to tune for the hyperparameter, of course, we have to get access to the div set so that we can know the performance, so that we can know which value is the best for the hyperparameter. Okay? Is that clear now? Right. Any questions on that? This concept of splitting and how to do proper evaluation of machine learning models is very important. And that applies on any model, yani. Uh, decision trees, uh, KNN, neural networks, any model, any machine learning model, this will apply to it. That's a general concept of evaluation. Okay, if you have any questions, please stop me. Okay, type. This is the general approach. So we split, the first step, we'll go through it quickly. We'll, uh, the first step is to split the data into training set, development set, and test set. These numbers are not uh, rocket science. Yani, uh, it's, usually we use these numbers, but you, we can change it. Okay? So here the numbers are 70%, 10%, 20%. Um, then for each possible setting of your hyperparameters, for each value of the hyperparameters, of course, if we have just one parameter, then it's just going through the values, the possible values of this hyperparameter, for, for example, the depth. Okay, so maybe we want to uh, um, uh, get the best value among from 0 to 10. Okay, so we'll, this, this is a loop that will go from 0 to 10, and each iteration we will build, we will train a new model with this set. Okay. We'll train a model with this set, and then in step B to B, we will compute the accuracy or the error. Type. After we are done with this loop, what should we do? We should pick the best, the model, or the, the, the hyperparameter values that gave us the best accuracy. Right? This is step three here. Then we test on the test set. Type. What if we have two hyperparameters, not just one? What will change here? Uh, 
Uh, no, we'll not go to step two twice. Actually, step two is very general. It, it says, it doesn't, it doesn't say that it, it's just one hyperparameter. It says the possible settings, setting of your hyperparameters. So every possible, and if we have two, then every combination of the values of the two hyperparameters, you loop over them. Yeah, let's say that we have two hyperparameters, uh, um, uh, P1 and P2, plus. There is three possible values for P1 and five possible values for P2. We want to pick the best among them, three and five, okay? So how many pairs we can have? Three times five, right? 15 pairs. So then that means that in, in this simple uh, uh, approach, uh, um, we'll go through this loop 15 times. Okay, every single pair, we will train a model for, with it. Okay, is that clear? Type, any questions on that? With this, we are done with session two. Session two was uh, uh, titled Learn, uh, um, Limits of Learning. Okay, and we went through multiple concepts in, in, this, uh, in this session. Now, inshallah, if you don't have any, any questions, now we will start a new session called Geometry and Nearest Neighbors. How many models we uh, studied so far? Just one, which is decision trees. Okay, inshallah, in this session, we will study the second one, which is K nearest neighbors, or nearest neighbors in general. So the, the uh, two goals of today's lecture in particular is to uh, study, if we have time of course, the uh, nearest, neighbor, uh, nearest neighbors algorithm for classification and we'll also, uh, if we have time, we will uh, go over a new concept in machine learning called decision boundary. You will see with this um, our, uh, uh, design of the course and which is following the, the textbook, the nice thing is that not every all concepts are introduced in the beginning and then you, you discuss the models. Concepts are introduced yani, over time, okay? Uh, which is good, yani, we, you learn some new models and then you learn new concept and apply that concept on that new model. So I hope that this will be um, easy for you, inshallah. Type. what is the intuition for nearest neighbors? In our daily lives, when we want to make a decision in a specific situation, we have a specific situation and we want to make a decision. Sometimes we think in the past, which situation in the past was similar to that situation that I went through, and then make a decision that is similar to the one that I made in the past. Right, we do that, right? We recall from our memory what happened in the, in the past to us, very similar situation to this, and if the, the decision that we made was good at the time, then we make a similar decision now, right? That's the idea of the main concept of nearest neighbors. We find something similar in what we know and make the decision based on that similar thing. Another example from also uh, from our uh, um, life, uh, doctors, when they, uh, when they get a patient and if they see um, the symptoms, okay, they might think also of patients that they saw that, that they have same symptoms, okay, and they had specific disease. So the, the prescription for that patient can be very similar, okay, uh, to the disease that was prescribed to the patients in the past. We do that all the time in, in different contexts, okay. Relating what we have now to something happened in the past. That's the main concept of nearest neighbors. Type. In more formal details. In machine learning, we have training examples, right? In classification. We are still in classification. We have training examples. We will see every training example as a vector of values. What are these values? These are the feature values. Okay? Remember... When we talked about uh, decision trees, we had the, uh, in the example, the playing tennis example, we had every day as an example, right? And every day has numbers or uh, values of features. We have multiple features. We can, here we will assume that all features are numeric so that we can view every example as a vector in a vector space. 
okay? But will be the dimensions of that space will be the number of features that we have. Here in that example, we assume that you have just two features. So the space is just two-dimensional space. Every point here, like for example, this point, has a value of feature one on the x-axis and value of, of feature two on the y-axis. Okay, so we can see every example in the training set as a point or a vector in the space. Of course, here this is a sim simple because we have just two dimensional, but we can generalize that to multiple dimensions. Type. Now this is the training set. And you see here that we assume that we have just two classes, positive and negative. So the label here indicates the, the I mean positive, the sign here indicates the label for each example. Okay, type. Now we are given a new example to predict the label for, which is this point. How can we apply the concept of nearest neighbors? We will find in our training data the examples that are very similar to the new example. And very similar here means in the vector space means the closest one. The examples that are very close to the given example. Because if they are very close, then the values of the features are very close also, right? Type. Then what do we do? We look at the labels of those closest examples. And from those labels, we make a decision based on the majority label. So in this case, in this specific case, we have three examples. Here we assume that we look at the, the three most, the three closest examples to the given one. Where did we get these examples? From the training data. So we look at the training data, we find out the three that are most similar, and then look up their labels. What should be the predicted label in this case? Positive, because the majority label here is positive. Even if we have just one negative here, still the majority will be positive, and the predicted label in this case will be positive. Okay, so we classify new examples based on the most similar training examples, and most similar here means the closest ones. Very simple, right? And very intuitive also. Any questions on how it works? That's the main idea. Type. What is done in training then? And we talked about prediction, right? We talked about how we predict the label for a new example. What do we do in training? Memorize what? We store. We are just storing the examples. We are not doing anything. We are not doing any, we are not getting any model here. Okay? We are just in training, storing the training examples. That's it. We're not doing anything more. You have a question? Salam. Is that clear? We don't, you get the training examples? Okay. We just keep them until we get the, the uh, um, we, until we need to predict, to do predictions. If we get a new example, then, then we start to look at the training examples, find the, the closest ones, and then we, uh, we uh, give the prediction based on that. Okay, so we do nothing in the training. Time. In general, this is called K nearest neighbors, because we can look at K closest examples. And K is just a parameter or a hyperparameter. So here it's one nearest neighbor. That means that we will only look for the closest one example. So here, this is X here is the, um, is the given unseen example that we want to predict the label for. And we find that the closest one to it is this one. So what should be the predicted label? Negative. Okay? Because the closest one was negative. Right. In this case, two nearest neighbors, by the way, this is the same data, okay? But we just change it k. When k is two here, what happens? We got these two as the closest ones. What should we give the, what should we predict now? Uh, we pick one of them because there is no majority. We have one positive, one negative. We we'll just randomly pick one. In the case of k equals three, three nearest neighbor, here we have 
two positives and one negative. These are the three closest points to the given one. So what should be the prediction? Positive, because we have two positives and one negative. The majority is positive, so we should predict positive for this example. Although this one is the closest one, but k is three. So we should not consider only the closest. We should consider the closest three. Okay, Among the closest three, the majority was positive. So the predicted value in this case will be positive. Yes. You mean the name of the of the model? Yeah. It's k nearest neighbor. And k is a hyperparameter, like the depth of the tree. You can change it. You can select, you can tune it, you should tune it. No. K doesn't doesn't determine to you the closest. Uh, I mean, I mean. For, for different test points, you might have different labels, different points, different closest points. K is the number of points that you will consider in making your decision. Okay, is that clear now? Okay. Yes. So how can we train to get K? Can we train to get K? Okay, in the previous slide, we mentioned that we don't do anything in training. This is answering your question, right? We don't do anything in training. And, and k is a hyperparameter. Do we learn the value of the hyperparameter using the training set? How do we do it? We have to have a development set. That's, that's the, the discussion in the beginning of the lecture, right? So we can also change k and pick the best value of k using the development set. Any other questions? Is that clear now? Sarah? Doesn't seem to. Yeah. So you understood that the depth of the tree is a hyperparameter? Yeah, exactly. It, because it changes, it changes your decisions, right? It changes the model that you, you, you train, right? Yeah. Here also, k is a hyperparameter. It changes the way that you make decisions. Instead of considering only one point here, and the label, the predicted label in this case would be negative, you might need to consider three and the predicted label would be positive. For the same point, by the way, and this is the same example, same data, same training data, and with the change in K, the prediction, predictions will change. So you, you don't know which value of K will be the best. You have to use a development set to tune the, va the value of K and then use it in your model. Any other questions? Type. This is the algorithm. We'll, that's very straightforward. Um, first, we have to compute the distances to the training examples. Now here, this is the predict algorithm, right? Where is the train algorithm? We don't have. <laughs> there is no training. Okay, so we don't have a training algorithm for K and N. It's just a prediction. Given that we have the training data, so D here is the training data, training set. And k is the hyperparameter, the value of k. And this is the test point that we want to predict the label for. So we start with, in order to do prediction, we have to find the closest points, right? So this step, in, in uh, two and three, we compute the distance between the um, test point, which is x hat here, and every point in the training set, okay? We sort this after we do it Do it for all points. We sort it and we get the top k. We go through the top k to get the, the majority vote. Okay, you can, you can look at it your, your, on your own. So these are the main steps. Getting the distances with every uh, possible point in the training set, sorting, and computing the majority vote to uh, give the prediction at the end. Okay, any questions so far? Is it easy or hard? Two easies. And the majority is not 
right? Or what? What do you think? Hmm. Ask questions, please, if you have any. Yes. Inshallah, I will go. Yes. Hmm. Nothing at all. Yes, just doing, just keeping the training examples. We don't get, so this algorithm, and you will see that in the next slide. This algorithm is, is completely different from, or this learning model is different from decision trees. In decision trees, we train, we build the tree from the data, right? Here, we don't do anything. We use the entire data, and as, as in decision trees, we use the entire data for training, right? Here, we use the entire data for prediction. We compute with every point that we, want, we need to compute the, the, the label for, we compute the distance with every example in the training data to get the closest K. Once we got the closest K, we can get the majority label of them and predict that label for the given test point. Yes. Okay. The splits, and I think we mentioned that earlier, the splits, the, the splitting concept that we talked about earlier is general. It is also applied here. So in this case, when we do the prediction, which, which, value, which uh, split we are using here? So this data is coming from the training set or the development set or the test set. Training only, from the training split only, okay? Type, what do we do to, uh, what do we do with the div set? Tune the hyperparameters, right? That's the general idea. What are the hyperparameters here? K. K, for now. It's K, okay? So same thing. Is that clear now? Yes. Raise your voice, please. Yes, using the development set. It's not just we will um, sleep for one day and then wake up saying, okay, the best value of K is 27. No. We tune the value of K based on the development set, the way that we described. How about using K as like a pattern to do accurate guessing? Well, this is how we will do it, yes, using the development set. We'll have to test with different values of k, that as we did with the depth of the tree. We have to test with different values of k and, and pick the one that gave us the best accuracy on which split? The diff, the diff set. Is that clear? Yes. Hmm. The dimensions here are in the this distance function. It's not it's not seen here. It's computing the distance function. Yeah, that would be yes, that's general, of course. Type. Now, there are two approaches to learning. One, uh, so this slide is a bit any uh, zooming out. Okay. The first approach to learning is called eager learning. In eager learning, we actually have we train a model. We have an abstract model in training, in the training phase, and then we use that model in prediction. Okay, this is called eager learning. There's another type of learning called lazy learning. In lazy learning, we just store the data in training, of training. We don't do, we don't have a model in training, but we use the entire data in classification or prediction. Okay, so in prediction, we compare the whatever we want to predict for with the stored data. That's lazy. That's lazy. Why is it lazy? Why is it called lazy? Because it doesn't do anything in learning, in training. It does everything in, at the prediction, at, in testing, in pred at prediction time. Okay? Type. Okay. Yes or no? 
Say it again. Does CNN have a learning stage? Learning stage? Like you mean training stage? Yes. Okay. So should we say yes or no? What do you think? No. Hmm. Yes or no? No. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, but that's not that's not what we mean by training, right? Uh, these values, by, by the way, storing them in memory, that's done in every, and you have to, to have the data set in memory, right? To, to build a model. Uh, that's, that's just given, okay? But do we do actually training? No. Okay, type. Some properties, uh, type, how, how about decision trees? Why we call decision trees an eager learning approach? Do we have a model? Do we train a model in decision trees? What is the model? The tree. The tree. Right, so we, we build an abstract model in decision trees. We build an abstract, mo uh, abstract model in training in the training phase. Type. Do we get act? I mean, do we use the training examples, the specific training examples, in testing? No. We just use the model. We build the model. خلاص. Training set done. We don't we don't need it. We just keep the model, and then this model, which is the tree, is used for prediction. So for prediction in eager learning, you just need the model, the abstract model. In decision trees, of course, the model is tree. In neural networks, it will be different. In uh, logistic regression, it would be different. Any, every model has its own parameters. Um, but for KNN, you have to keep the entire data set entire entire training set in prediction phase because you have to compute the distances right is that clear now type properties of of lazy uh, lazy learning as we said it returns all the information out oh, we didn't say that actually since we are storing everything and we're using the the exact specific examples we are not losing any information from training and we are keeping every piece of information in the training examples. In decision trees, if we have the depth uh, hyperparameter, are we keeping everything? No, it's just like an approximation of the, of the training data. We don't keep the, 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 the examples themselves. Okay? So that's a property. The complex hypothesis space, we'll talk about it, I think, next lecture, inshallah. Classification can be very slow. Let's talk first about training. Is training fast or, or slow in uh, KNN? Fast. Uh, we are not doing anything, right? So it's fast. Okay? Very fast. Uh, it's the fastest. Is there any, anything can be faster than that? Anything that can be faster than doing nothing? Okay? Fa it's the fastest. It's very fast. But classification is very slow. Why? Yes. Yes, between the test point and every point in the training example, we need to compute the distance. That takes time, of course. Okay. So it's pros and cons. Pro uh, is that the training is, is fast. Actually, no training. And uh, the con here is the uh, it takes time to, to do the prediction. Time. Components of KNN classifier. The first thing is the distance metric. We need to know how to compute the distance. We, we said distance, right? We just said distance. We need to compute the distance. Type. How can we compute the distance? I, the, the most common way, we'll talk about it, I think, in the next, lecture, uh, the next uh, slide. Okay? But there are ways that we, we learned in other disciplines, right? Like uh, linear algebra. You know how to compute the distance between two points, right? So we'll talk about that. And that will, uh, as we will see, determine the, how the space will, uh, will look like. The other component in the classifier is the k hyperparameter, um, and um, we will we will also talk about it inshallah next time. Time. Let's start with the distance metric. There are many ways to compute the distance between points. The the common one is called Euclidean distance, and this uh, this is I think what you studied in linear algebra, right? How do we compute the distance between two points if we have two dimensions? 
square root of the sum of the square differences in each dimension, right? You know this. So this is called Euclidean distance or L2 distance. There is another other way uh, or other ways for computing distances. One of them is called L1 distance, which is simpler than Euclidean. Okay, in L1, we just sum the absolute differences. And x1, the absolute value of x1 minus, a minus x2 plus the absolute value of y1 minus y2. We don't square, we don't take the square root. Okay, this is called L1 distance or Manhattan distance. There is another way that is uh, also in, in front of you. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll discuss these figures now. Uh, called max norm, when you just take the, the maximum value of the absolute differences in, in each dimension. The maximum value will be the uh, will be the distance. Yeah, the maximum of absolute of x1 minus x2 and y1 and my, uh, minus y2. Of course, all of what we described here, uh, assuming that we have just two dimensions, right? But you can, of course, generalize to multiple dimensions. Type. What do we have in front of us here? Does any of you uh, know what, what we have here? Okay, what is the meaning of this? You see a point here in the center of, of, the, of the figure, right? Okay, now every shape in general, because we have square here, we have tilted, uh, uh, sorry, we have circle here, we have tilted square here, we have square here. Uh, so for every shape, all the points on that shape, on that boundary, have the same distance with the center using this distance, this metric. So for Euclidean distance, it will be circles. Circles, all points on circles will have the same distance with the center of this of the circle. Okay, so all points in that circle have the same distance from the from the center here. With L1, these shapes are no longer circles, they are squares like that. All points on these squares, in this square, for example, have the same Manhattan distance or L1 distance from the center. Same here with the max norms. Max norm. Okay? So this is uh, just to to show you the uh, to to any uh, um, to make it easier to understand the difference between these uh, these different uh, measures. Type. Uh, next, we need to discuss um, a new concept called decision boundary. We'll just give an introduction here today, and inshallah, we will expand it uh, next time. Type. First, we will discuss what we call Voronoi diagram. What do we mean by Voronoi diagram? You see here the uh, black points. You, do you see the black points here? Every point has a region that is colored differently from the others, right? What is the region for each point? The region here determines the area where this point is the closest to the points in that region. In other words, for example, for this point, this is the region for that point, okay? Every point in that region, this point is the closest to it in the entire space. So this is like the territory of each point. This is the region that I am closest to any point in it. It's like this is my area, this is my land, this is my region, okay? So uh, surrounding every point in the space, there, there will be a region where this point is the closest to it. Is that clear? So for example, this area, every point here, you will find that this point is the closest to it, closest one to it. Okay, whenever you, you take a point, take a point here, you will see that this one, is closest than this one. Okay, actually this one will be closest to any other, from any other points. Okay, and so on. Type. Here we have like six or seven points. Here we have much more. 
and you will see when we increase these points, these regions will get smaller, right? Because now it's harder to determine the area where I am the, the king, where uh, all the points will be closest to me, or will, where I will be closest to the points, okay? So every single point will have maybe smaller type. This is, if I assume that K is one, if I'm looking at um, the, uh, uh, the closest one point, but if I increase K, this will change. But the idea will be the same. It will be an area, and a Voronoi diagram has multiple regions where each region, all the points in that region will have the same exact closest points in general, K points. Okay, this will help us, inshallah, in uh, explaining what we mean by decision boundary next time. Do you have any questions before we stop? Yes. One in any, any, when K is one, yeah. can be. Oh, no, 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 okay, just a second. Okay, there is a difference between K which is how many point, which determines how many points I consider in prediction, and the number of features in the examples. Yani how many features we had in the playing tennis uh, example? Well, five, I think, right? So if we want to apply k nearest neighbor, assuming that these features are all numeric, it's if, if we assume them, because they have to be numeric so that we can compute distances, right? If we apply it here, then the space, instead of two dimensions, like what we, we saw in the, in the beginning here, it's, the space would be five dimensions. Of course, we cannot imagine it, okay? Uh, we can imagine two, we can imagine three. Beyond three, we cannot as humans. But numerically, we can use it, okay? So that we will imagine that we have five dimensions, or 10 dimensions, or 11 dimensions, thousand dimensions, millions of dimensions. Still, that will apply, as long as we can compute the distance values. 